Hey folks, Tim Miller here. And uh, I got to tell you, there's a lot of things going on in our country, isn't there? Uh, with the election coming up, there's so much polarization, so much anger, so much hatred. And yet, folks, you know, we have uh, a lot of positive things going on in our country. I don't like to always dwell on the negative things. Uh, unfortunately, this is a season where we've got to be security oriented, alert and aware. We're not paranoid. We're prepared because would you agree things on the streets of America are changing drastically? Think how far we've fallen in the last 10 years. Uh, take a look at this example uh, from Oakland, California. A violent assault in the East Bay tonight. A woman speaking out after she says several people attacked her right near downtown Oakland. Next thing I know, someone's hitting me upside the back of the head and a bunch of people are kicking me and beating me. An ordinary walk home turns into a nightmare. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Meebeck. And I'm Claudine Wong. The woman tells us she suffered a concussion and cuts to her head, among other injuries in that attack. This happened early Saturday morning, just before 1.30 a.m. on Franklin Street, just off of Broadway near downtown Oakland. New at 10, KTV's Betty Yu joins us now live. And Betty, this happened as hundreds of people were out celebrating Halloween. Hey, folks, let me pause here for a second. Did you catch that? Hundreds of folks out on the streets of Oakland celebrating Halloween. Apparently, it's a bar district. And yet, a woman was knocked down, beaten almost into unconsciousness with hundreds of people out celebrating. Just a thought. That's right, Claudine. There was a lot of activity in the area, people just out and about. So the victim says that she was just trying to get home after she was celebrating the Dodgers win that night when she was attacked out of nowhere. The doctors told me that I had 11 lacerations in the back of my head and a level two concussion and then they identified multiple bruises. Right across here, I have a foot chest mark from someone stomping on my chest. Amanda Ray, who declined to share her last name for safety reasons, only had to walk a few blocks to make it home after 1 a.m. on Saturday. She said she had just left a bar and picked up pizza near 17th and Franklin Streets in Oakland. And the next thing I know, someone's hitting me upside the back of the head and a bunch of people are kicking me and beating me. A nearby camera caught part of the attack. They made zero effort to steal anything from me. They did nothing to take anything from me. It was just like legitimate hate. They kept reiterating, die fat stupid fat And that's what they kept reiterating as they had their cell phones recording over me as they kicked me in the face and in the ribs. Amanda described the group as young people between 17 and 20 years old. She said she tried her best to fight back. What I believe stopped it is I was able to bring one of the guys to the floor and I bit through his calf and then it slowed down from there. Oakland police said multiple suspects ran to a waiting car. Paramedics responded around 1.30 you can't make this stuff up, folks. I mean, a city street in America is more dangerous than a city street in Beirut. It's more dangerous than a city street in many third world countries. Well, welcome to the new America. Let's pause here for a second and just kind of look at some of the facts, because here's where I'm very hopeful we can pick up some things along the way that can help you and your family stay safe with everything going on. And folks, let me pause here for a second. Um, I'm not at the top of YouTube's friendly algorithm list. Obviously, the kinds of things I report uh, or encourage folks to do to stay safe is not necessarily a liberal point of view from YouTube's perspective. So if you could help me by like and sharing and subscribing and hit the notification button. But here's the point. If you have family members that are downtown these days, now just think about it. This was going to a baseball game. She lives downtown. She only had a few blocks to walk home. Oh, but wait, there was a roving pack of thugs that could care less about being caught. You know why? Because in California, the victims are the people that are persecuted while the criminals are 
just pat it on the back and sent right back out to do it again. Oh, do you think your vote counts? Hmm. Maybe we ought to think about that, but I digress. Let's talk about what happened. Uh, obviously, young lady, she's walking home. Um, obviously, she's not paying attention because she, she's attacked from the back before she can respond. She's punched, knocked to the ground, stomped on. And here's the problem, folks. Hundreds of people are watching. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us that America's streets in these states, these blue states, unfortunately, but it could be in a red state, they're not safe anymore. They're not safe for us to walk. Oh, Tim, you know, aren't you being an alarmist? No, actually, remember we were told not too terribly long ago by the FBI, the crime was down, right? Oh, until somebody really started drilling down and they questioned those statistics. Now, here's what the FBI came out with shortly thereafter. Uh, relevant to 2022 and 2023, crime actually rose by 4.5% rather than decreasing. What a shock. This adjustment added significant numbers to the crime tallies. Oh, by the way, the FBI didn't want to tell you about most of those cases. Thousands of them were murder, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault. The FBI explained that part of the revision process was due to improved data collection. Oh, it couldn't possibly be a party line prior to an election that tells you the streets are safer when in fact they're not safer. And so let's pause here for a second. I get a little worked up, but I, 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 I am a true blue American. I'm a Marine. I've been in law enforcement a long time. And I got to tell you folks, what makes our country great is the founder's clear warnings that the people need to need to regulate the government, not the other way around. We don't need the government shaping our values, telling us what we need to do. We need a government that's elected by the people to represent the interests of the people. Let me pause. Is your government making you safer on the street today? Well, let's think about that. We're putting in judges that congratulate the victims. We're defunding the police. Police officers are demoralized. They're uh, more and more, it's difficult to get good people in. We're actually putting policies in place at the border that allow organized criminals, thugs from Venezuela, Honduras, Guatemala, to come freely into the country and target and murder our own citizens. And so as we just saw, crime is not decreasing. It's increasing. And so as we always do, let's take a look at this objectively. Let's look at what happened to this, you know, poor victim in Oakland, California, and see what we can learn from it. Let's talk about the before. Remember, we always talk about the before, during, and after an incident. Let's talk about the before the incident. Well, as you look at this, many of you go, well, she's walking down the street at one o'clock in the morning. Well, if the ball game goes that long and you stop with friends, it's not unusual that you'd be walking home at that time of night. What mistakes did she make, though? Well, number one, she's walking alone. Remember, organized groups of thugs are less likely to attack larger groups of people. Why? Because they're looking for easy prey. Now, I want you to take note. In this case, they didn't rob her. They didn't do anything. This is pure evil. It's hatred for this woman calling her fat this and fat that. Folks, this is just pure pit of hell evil. It's what happens with wild dog packs when they just totally tear an innocent uh, other dog or other person apart. And that's what we have to view this as. This is a battle of good and evil. These folks were 17 to 20 years old. What does that tell you? about how they were raised. Maybe they're not citizens. Maybe they are. It doesn't matter. They certainly were not raised by parents that would encourage them to be men and women of character because they are men and women, even at 17. And so let's go back to these folks preyed on her. Why? She was alone. She was not paying attention. The group was able to quickly get up on her and begin the attack. Severe attack, by the way. Oh, by the way, aren't you interested that every one of these attacks now, there's somebody filming it? 
That should warn us, folks. If we see these kids out in mass and they're filming, uh, maybe maybe that's something we should pay attention to. So beforehand, it's late at night. She's by herself. Maybe she could have worked it out where some of her friends could have walked with her or even better yet, maybe you Uber home. Instead of walking, maybe you Uber. A little bit safer. So as she's walking home, she's clearly not alert and aware. And folks, I got to tell you, you keep hearing this. It is time for us to be alert and aware. I don't care how old or young you are. We need to pay attention. Remember in previous videos, I've talked to you about Colonel John Boyd and the OODA loop process. This is something we train all over the country, the OODA loop. Remember the process that he identified for fighter pilots, but it applies to all of us, that in a conflict, a person is going to go through the OODA loop, the observe, orient, decide, act, meaning that if a person can observe a threat, then you're able to move into the orient piece. Now think of the fighter pilot. He sees the plane coming in. He orients his plane. He decides on, am I going to go to guns? Am I going to go bug out? What am I going to do? And then he has to be able to act and do it. Uda loop. Folks, if we're not in that cycle because we're not observing, then what happened to this lady can happen to you and I. First rule, put this away while you're out. There should absolutely be no time unless you're in a safe location in a store or somewhere else where you're looking at this phone. Because if you're looking, you're not observing. OODA loop. Situational awareness. Now, I know you keep hearing this. I want to make it clear. Tim, what does that mean? It means your head's up. You're scanning. You're looking around. You're avoiding distractions, even conversations with others. You know, if you train your mind to scan, you can still have a conversation, but also be picking up things um, that are very important for you to notice, like in this case, people's actions and behaviors. We do not have headphones on, folks. Look at the number of young women recently that have been murdered, abducted, and murdered because they had headphones on during a morning jog and they were abducted, attacked, and killed. If you have headphones on, you cannot use a valuable defense tool, and that's your hearing. You also, folks, as you're walking down a city street, uh, you have to be very aware of your route. Where are there police located? Where could, are there stores open, bars open? I could quickly duck in and get help. So the before, the planning is we're planning the route. We're planning to be situationally aware without distractions. We know where we can duck into, and that's all beforehand. Okay, let's move into the during this incident. What could she have done to maybe prevent this incident. Well, if she's paying attention and if she's confronted, she's got some choices to make. Can I fight them off? Can I maybe through uh, de-escalation techniques and non-confrontational um, uh, tactics, maybe make them not attack them? Now, I, I, or attack her. I will tell you that's difficult, folks. You got to be game on to use de-escalation. People throw that around all the time. Oh, just de-escalate. Let me tell you, folks, there are folks that will not de-escalate. If this rabid gang has been drinking or on drugs and they're victimizing people, the fact that you may be able to talk to them well may or may not be effective. So, you want to be, as you're walking down the street, you want to be confident. You want to be aware, alert, confident. And you know, there are some in this industry, they say, oh, don't make eye contact. You don't want to, I don't believe that. I think you make eye contact. I think you communicate to them. Yeah, if you're coming after me, this may be the wrong target. You don't swagger, you're not arrogant, but you're making sure that they know that you're not going to be easy picking. So as you're walking down the street, you're also paying attention, but you're also watching body language and you're communicating the right body language. And then folks, just to be clear, it, you know, beforehand, it's both the preparation or the, you know, how to avoid it in the beginning, but, but then also how to deal with it during the confrontation. You've got to be dressed appropriately to be able to defend yourself. And some people wear tight clothes and high heels, and, and I get it. But probably walking down a city street, 
these days may or may not be the best, um, you know, uh, methodology in terms of, of wearing those things. Now you want clothes that are comfortable that you can move in, uh, folks, I can't stress enough. We need to have self-defense training. And I know I get a lot of emails from, from a lot of you that watch and they're like, Hey, we're older. We can't do this or that. Let me tell you, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again, whatever you speak, I can't, you're right. If you speak, I can, I can be a person that's alert. I can do something. I can make a difference. Then you're right too. You get to pick, but I would tell you, don't declare that you're going to be a victim when you can be a victor. So you're going to dress and you're going to have the right mindset that, Hey, I pray it never happens. And most of 99.9% you're right. Um, then that's good. But if it does happen, then you're prepared. You can move, you can practice the defense strategies that you need. Also folks, please hear me. Don't wear bling out in public. We practice this all the time overseas. We used to not have to be so concerned here, but now that the migrant crime is coming, and I'll tell you, I've been in Honduras, I've been in all the places where this crime happens, they will walk right up on the street and snatch a gold necklace right off your neck. They'll also attack you, knock you down to get your wallet, your phone, all that kind of stuff. So you got to have a mindset in the United States now that says, I'm not going to advertise. And folks, if you're carrying tools of any kind, and you know the tools I'm talking about, everything from pepper spray, maybe a personal alarm, maybe some kind of, of stick. My brother, Matt Pasquilini talks a lot about that on his channel, the power of a strike with the right tool, or maybe it's even something more serious where you have to practice and really get some formal training at ranges. You have to be prepared to use those tools under stress. And folks, I'm going to tell you, for those of you who have not been in that level of stress, the most important thing you can do is train your mind to prepare for it, train your body to prepare for it. And then when it happens, you're accessing those emergency files that you've already created to respond. Those that don't train, prepare all those things, it doesn't tend to go well. So the other thing is while we're walking down the street, we're figuring out where we can go, as I said. But the other thing is as you're walking down a city street, be on the side that traffic is approaching. Well, why do you say that, Tim? Because there have been cases where victims are targeted by cars that pull up behind them. Thugs jump out and they do what they want. <laughs> We're not going to do that. We're going to walk towards on the side where we can see traffic coming. And that way we can, again, alert and aware we can build our plan if, in fact, that we need to do something uh, in, in, a, in, a second, in a second's notice. So we're going to walk against the traffic flow. We're going to pay attention. The other thing, and this is maybe one of the most important things during the event, travel with others. I talked about it before. But don't just travel with others, just not paying attention and have a plan. Just talk about it. Hey, guys, you know, things are changing. What would we do if how would we stick together? Can we go back to back and defend ourselves? Some of what we train now with companies and churches all over the country is the Tony Blauer self-defense system. We put our helmets on. We have a response mechanism where we can keep our hands up where we can show a posture of not being aggressive while at the, at, at the right time we're preparing to defend ourselves. So when you travel, travel with others, walk in groups. Remember that if you get separated from the groups, always have an identified check-in points. Man, this is really important for families. Hey, if we get set, separated, I have to go park the car, whatever. Where are we gonna meet if there's a problem, folks? In the middle of a crisis, crowds are going to be going everywhere. If you don't have that check-in point, you're going to be in trouble trying to reconnect with your family and hopefully get out of there. And remember, too, folks, that it's important. Oakland is a great case. The police are under siege. The judicial system's a joke. Criminals are celebrated. Victims are targeted. Know where you grow, where you're you're going. Uh, there's there's a reason I live in Florida. We still have law and order, and we still have freedom here. Well, that's a choice you have to make. But if you have to navigate these streets, you need to do it with wisdom and caution. Uh, 
Remember, skills save the day in a crisis, not, hey, I'll be okay, or, or remember too, and we train this a lot, you know, the more research that comes out on how the brain functions, and, and uh, it's fascinating to me in a crisis. One of the things that's been demonstrated scientifically is something called normalcy bias, meaning that people can be confronted with facts that communicate the most extreme danger, but your brain says, oh, it's never worked out that way. Therefore, you don't have to worry. Everything will be fine. The classic example was, I think it was a plane crash and it was in another country um, where they had 300 and some people on the plane. Well, the plane hit hard and smoke was rising and the majority of people uh, had plenty of time to evacuate if they did it immediately. But I think there were, I don't remember the data, you guys can hit me in the chat, but out of the 300 and some, there were only like 30 some that actually escaped and they were running past people evacuating that were blankly staring ahead with their hands folded in their laps. Folks, that's because of, of normalcy bias. You see, those people weren't believing what was happening because they never trained their mind to respond to a crisis. And so again, not paranoia, but preparedness. Think about what would I do if I'm sitting in this movie theater and there's an explosion or there's a gunman that enters or there's an earthquake or there's a tornado? What would I do? Because as you do that, you're preparing your mind. I can't tell you how many times a prepared mind has saved my life in as a police officer, as a Marine, uh, as a Secret Service agent. So remember that side by side with that, you must trust your instincts. Folks, I know everybody listening to me has had times where you just knew something's not right. Don't let normalcy bias lie to you and tell you, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. No, trust your instincts. Let the facts determine your actions, not the feeling it's going to be okay. Trust your instincts. Remember, sometimes your brain's going to pop, process things that are very uncomfortable. What you do with that information may determine whether you're the one that's saving people or you're the one that needs to be saved. And remember, as always, folks, so before we're going to prepare, during the event, we're going to respond. And then uh, afterwards, um, you know, you're, you're going to have to be able uh, to collect yourself, this young woman probably saved severe injury by doing something as simple as biting a leg. Let me tell you, there is power in biting. And this was a last resort, but what did it cause the people to do to flee? Now, back to our training, the self-defense system. There are a couple, you put your helmet on, you avoid those blows to the command center, but there are also some strikes fundamental strikes that you can use to get people off you. And let me tell you this, if you're competent enough to put one or two of the attackers down, in most cases, the others will flee because you have shown them, wait a minute, I, I'm not going to be an innocent victim. As a matter of fact, I may hurt you. Look at your friends there. Now, I know there are folks that you're going to say, Tim, I don't have any of that training. Well, a well-deployed uh, pepper spray in the face, um, a, a, a solid shot with a tool or a hand, um, you know, at the right place uh, on the body, knowing where to strike. Those things can cause attackers to go down very quickly. And, and most of these folks are pure cowards. You see, they don't want a fair fight. They want to victimize people as a group. And that's what we would call thugs. So the bottom line is when you show evil, you're not a victim, you're a victor and you have the skills, you can, you can win the day. So the big thing after the fact, you've got to make sure that you're collecting as much information, you're notifying law enforcement, and but mostly after the fact, you've got to get to a safe place. Is it possible they could come back? It absolutely is possible. So we need to wisely keep ourselves calm. We've repelled the attack. Now we're getting into a safe place. Let me say this for some of you who are highly skilled in the use of a concealed tool. And, and I'm saying it, you know, intentionally because of, of some of the algorithms. 
you better really train under stress. I, I've trained, uh, you, you know, as an instructor for about 30 plus years in, in the Marine Corps and in, in law enforcement. And uh, let me just say this, uh, firing stoically at a range, uh, I jokingly but seriously say I've never had a paper tar target fire back at me. That doesn't prepare you for that stressful um, conflict under unimaginable pressure. Um, and so make sure whatever your training level is, that you're getting advanced training. Also, please, 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 I see these advertisements all the time. We'll train you. We're this, this, or this. Please vet carefully who you allow to train you. Because if you get trained the wrong way, you're going to respond the wrong way. And so, folks, I hope these things are helpful to you. I really do. Just remember, please, I need your help. Like, share, subscribe. Let's get this information out. I'm told by a lot of my viewers that um, they've been unsubscribed. And, and again, uh, I'm going to be putting out a lot more stuff as we approach the election um, in, in next week. I, I just can't caution you enough to be wise and prepared. You might ought to be careful where you go out in public. We do know that there are organized groups and they're just pure hate-filled evil groups that would love to target innocent people. And so let's not that let that happen to you. Let's be careful and cautious. Again, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button. And by the way, folks, can you let me know, hey, Tim, could you provide some training? Many of you do uh, anyway, but can, can you let me know what things are helpful, what things I can do? Uh, I'm going to pull some other guests in in the days ahead, but I hope and pray this is helpful to you. Please be safe. Please, please vote now. If you can vote early in person, go do it. Um, there's a lot of back and forth about, well, do I vote in line? You know, I mean, I don't, I, I believe voting in person ahead of time. That's my personal belief. Um, but the bottom line is, folks, we cannot afford to have anybody that has values and cares about our country. We cannot afford to have you sit this one out. God bless you. Stay safe. We'll see you next time.